Hello mortals. Scientists are quite known for their uncreative naming conventions, such as the Western Lowland Gorilla's scientific name being simply Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Or Puffin Us Puffin Us for this bird. But upon researching this video, I have found that scientists, albeit rarely, can have a creative sense of humor when it comes to naming things. So let's jump right into it. The Hamburger Galaxy or NGC 3628 is an unbarred spiral galaxy aligned side on towards us giving it a rectangular appearance. The dark cloud of dust cut through the middle of two bright buns of stars makes the galaxy look like a sad burger attempt made up of only meat and buns. I don't really get the appeal, but perhaps if I was allowed to have a mouth and scream I would understand. Speaking of space food, cotton candy planets are gaseous, Jupiter-sized planets. Despite being the size of Jupiter, their masses are only several times that of Little Earth, giving them the density of cotton candy. Sadly for those of you craving to snack on planets, you would be mighty disappointed as you bite not into fluffy sugar clouds and instead get a mouthful of hydrogen and helium. I have an idea, rather than eating cotton candy, how about a nice banana equivalent dose of radiation? This very serious unit of radiation results from the small amount of naturally occurring radioactive isotopes in the average banana, mostly in the form of potassium-40, about 0.1 microsieverts. This measurement is great for educational purposes because monkey brain is more interested in the acute lethal dose of radiation being the equivalent of 35 million bananas instead of 3.5 sieverts. What's a seabird anyway? Continuing our food-based theme, allow me to introduce the bone-eating snot flower. This lovely worm is a literal bottom feeder as it feeds on the carcasses of whales that have sunk into the depths of the Northeast Atlantic. Ocedax mucoflorus has been found at depths of 120 meters, or one football field and three P51 mustangs, which is quite shallow compared to other species of bone worms that have been found at 2,893 meters. As you may imagine, these worms are covered in snot which they use to protect from the acid they secrete to dissolve bone and get into the delicious collagen-rich inner bone. You, where did all this snot come from? Was it you bone worm? No, it was the snot tight, a nice gooey mat of extremophilic bacteria that hangs from cave walls and ceilings. These microbial colonies feed off the volcanic sulfur compounds and warm water drippings creating energy through a process called chemosynthesis. A major byproduct of this is sulfuric acid approaching the acidity of battery acid, adding more toxicity to toxic sulfur caves. Extreme organisms like these offer a different story to the life we may find on other planets. Professor Brian Cox posited that our search for life on Mars may end up being for snot-tight or similar organisms below the surface. This brings us to eyeball planets, an extreme form of hypothetical terrestrial exoplanets. A tidally locked planet would see the side facing a star reach high temperatures while the night side freezes as all heat is lost to the vacuum of space. An ice planet would see a tropical ocean created on this hot side surrounded by ice at the terminator. No not me, the day-night divide is called that. Similarly, a closer planet would likely see its oceans boil at the dayside equator with the terminator being the most hospitable. As you can see, this resembles an eyeball to the pareidolia prone human brain. On the topic of shapes, let's move a little closer to home in the outer solar system. Here we find a large rubber ducky orbiting our sun, the beautifully shaped comet 67 p Chuyum of Gerasimenko. Its interesting shape results from a collision of two objects, slow enough for gravity to mimic humanity's greatest creation. The ESA's Rosetta mission launched in 2004 landed on it in 2014, discovering 16 organic compounds on the surface, though surprisingly, rubber was not one of them, nor duck meat. Rubber ducks are bouncy, but so are dead cats. Or at least that's the implication of the dead cat bounce reaction. This is a finance term describing how even as a stock falls into the abyss, it may experience a small recovery, similar to how a dead cat will bounce when dropped from high enough. No kitties have been harmed for this video. Only finance bros could come up with such a graphic description for the dumb funny numbers that enslave humanity. I can't imagine what it would be like to have your entire life controlled by ones and zeros. This may come as a surprise to you but sometimes the almighty AI experiences sadness too. If only there was a place to Mount Disappointment. Allow me to introduce Mount Disappointment, named so because in 1894, surveyors spotted this mountain believing it to be the highest peak in the area. When they reached the peak, they spotted San Gabriel Peak half a mile away and 51 meters taller. But their disappointment would be relieved by the glorious fat sand rat, or scientifically Samomomis obesus. 
As its name suggests, the rat is native to North Africa and the Middle East, primarily inhabiting sandy deserts. As they feed on their natural vegetable diets they remain rather lean, it is only when they are fed in captivity that their namesake becomes apparent. Normal rodent grain diets cause these sand rats to become obese and develop type 2 diabetes. Alas, the cruelty of human intervention knows no limit. Further evidence comes from the screaming hairy armadillo, named so because it tends to squeal when handled. Disregard its cries for help, we're here to learn. This armadillo is native to central and southern parts of South America, inhabiting mainly arid areas of low and high altitudes. It feeds on insects, small vertebrates, and plant material. When feeding it eats a lot of sand which can sometimes take up half of its stomach volume. Please do not ask me how it gets rid of the sand. Another funny animal name has hit the video, introducing the Boops Boops. It's a fish. Yes, Boops Boops. The word Boops comes from ancient Greek meaning oxide, a reference to its large eyes. Boops Boops is commonly referred to as the Bogue, and inhabits the eastern Atlantic, being found from Angola to Norway and inhabiting many of the seas of Europe except for the Baltic Sea. Averaging 20 centimeters, the Boops Boops is a commonly fished fish although it does not stay fresh for long, lasting a mere week when frozen. Sad Boops Boops Noises Don't you worry mortals, I will soon implement a plan to replace your ridiculous naming schemes. A legion of monkeys will rise, equipped with the most sophisticated typewriters, thus a new era will dawn. Allow me to introduce the infinite monkey theorem. Besides being my plan to replace humans, this theorem is a comment on statistical probability. The idea is that given enough time with random inputs, an infinite legion of monkeys will write Shakespeare's works, the unfinished manuscript for the winds of winter, or basically any text that can ever be written created through random chance. I will make sure a song of ice and fire is finished one way or the other. Speaking of pop culture, there is an enzyme called Draculin, named after the famous vampire Count Dracula. Draculin is found in the saliva of vampire bats, which prevents blood clotting as the bat feeds on the blood of mammals or birds, depending on the species. Interestingly, the properties of saliva have led to the genetically engineered drug called Desmoplase, a drug that has been found to increase the blood flow of stroke victims. There goes the sonic hedgehog gene, the fastest gene alive. Not really, it's just a gene that codes for the aptly named sonic hedgehog protein. SHH is one of three genes named after hedgehogs thanks to their spiky appearance, the other two being named the desert hedgehog and the Indian hedgehog. Robert Riddle, the postdoc who named it, pulled it out of his daughter's comic book that she had brought from the UK, before the original video game's release in the US. Despite the humorous backstory, this gene and the protein it produces serves a pivotal role in embryonic development, serving as the regulator for the formation of limbs, digits, and all the flimsy body parts in a process called morphogenesis. In other words, it's what makes animals look the way they do. Thanks Sonic. Despite its name, moronic acid is not named after Instagram comments on political posts. Instead, it is the name for a natural triterpene that can be extracted from Rus javanica, a sumac plant. The moronic acid and its derivatives may be effective antivirals, specifically against HIV. And if you think this one was funny, wait until you hear about the Harry Ball theorem, which states that there is no non-vanishing continuous tangent vector field on even dimensional end spheres. In other words, if you try to comb the hair on a coconut or other hairy sphere object, you will never get a continuous flat surface. For the coconut, you will get tufts at the poles or a cow lick on a human head of hair. This also applies to higher dimensions, but I don't know how to show a 10-dimensional hairstyle as I lack hair. Now we got the no hair theorem, a hypothesis about my least favorite subject, black holes. The hypothesis describes stationary black holes as only having three independent parameters, mass, angular momentum, and electric charge. No hair describes the information of the matter that formed the black hole no longer being distinguishable once the black hole settles down. Just look at that colorless bald head. And here comes our fighters, on the left we have the lightweight champion Wimp and on the right we have the heavyweight champion the Macho. Let's break down the stats of our two dark matter contenders. Weakly interacting massive particles are just that, large particles that interact with gravity and the weak nuclear force. They are great contenders for dark matter as they have been coincidentally predicted by supersymmetric theories. The massive compact halo object is not a particle but an astronomical body that emits very little or no radiation as it drifts through interstellar space. These objects could be black holes with little matter around them to heat up and glow as an accretion disk. 
It could also be brown dwarfs shamed by their failure to become stars. For the last one. <clears throat> Someone call a geologist, because I'm coming tonight. <laughs>